So they have a lot of their high-end spirits there, including all of their high-end tequilas, mezcals, and other pricier, exclusive spirits. And their menu was super impressive. What's up guys, it's Eric with Travels Uncorked and we are here at a restaurant opening in Cave Creek, Arizona. This is just a little bit up from our place in North Phoenix. They extended us a little sneak peek invite to come check out their food and beverage menu here at this new restaurant concept. We're in Stagecoach Village, which is a really cool attraction spot. Both locals and tourists flock to this spot. So we're gonna head into Ofrenda. This is Latin inspired cuisine, taking apparent concepts and recipes from both Mexico as well as different parts of South America. So we're excited to try it, see what this new locally owned restaurant has going on. So we just finished our dining experience at Ofrenda, which roughly translates to celebration of life, and it has a lot of meaning we learned for the owners based on their own life events. Two different partners have come together to help create this concept and bring a new life to this space where a previous restaurant had been. They've bonded forces together to create this new concept and really put a lot of themselves, both of their restaurant experience, into this concept. So you see that with the meaning all the way through the table were hand carved wood all of the decor that you'll see that it's adorning all the walls was literally handmade these just gorgeous elaborate flowers with different textures there's been a lot of attention to detail to this place and a lot of really loving care that's gone into creating an experience and that really is something that left an impression on us here and that's really something that was intentional and special for the owners to create Uh, they also had a mezcal gin. We've heard of mezcal, but never a mezcal gin. So of course, I had to get the Mi Casa Su Casa. Had the mezcal gin along with red moscato, lime, and allspice in it. The really good thing about the mezcal is that it really balanced out the sweetness of the moscato with the smoky of the mezcal. My first experience with mezcal gin was definitely one I will want to try again. really been into mezcals lately and so I got a mezcal drink that also mixed apricot in there. A lot of nice sweet and smokiness to the drink. Really distinctive, allowed the liquor in it to shine and really showcase that it was a really nice mezcal. Gave a little bit of that fruit flavor balance so you had the really sweet and smoky together with that. For 
for our first course, we had seasonal ceviche, which was prawns for this evening, as well as a summer squash salad. And while we were talking with one of the chefs, he explained to us that squash, zucchini, grow very well in Latin America. So it really gave us an essence of foods that have been around in the area for a very long time. The way that they thinly sliced the squash and zucchini and turned it into a delicious salad. It was very fresh, really was a representation of the area. For our next dish, we had a really tasting plate that was called their Al Carbon board. It had their version of a hummus on there. It also had grilled vegetables, including two different types of asparagus. It also had fried hominy and then house-made guacamole as well as homemade tortillas. These weren't your store-bought tortillas. These were dark, deep blue corn, really soft, gorgeous type of tortillas. Kind of scoop a little bit of that good chunky guacamole with it was amazing. Really fresh, really good flavor, really good balance. And with the hummus, the pepita is like Marianne was talking about with our first course. Pepita is actually like a type of pumpkin seed or a squash seed or a gourd seed. And so these are really common. They can be sourced year round in a lot of Latin countries. And so it's a very common ingredient that you're gonna see mixed in a lot of different dishes. So we saw a little bit of sprinkling of raw seed in the actual salad that we had, but then we also saw it grinded and used as a texture and almost like an oil binding agent inside the hummus itself and a couple of our other little pieces of our tasting plate. So really taking the fresh ingredients, locally sourced with the whole idea, traditional recipes that they're really bringing here to the forefront and really showcasing an entire a region, not only from Mexico, but throughout South America. You can never go wrong with house marinated New York strip. And so that's what we had with their carne dish. It was absolutely delicious, very good textures. And then along with that, we had a black bean puree as well as little frijole potatoes that blended all together, made for a perfect bite. Somehow, after all these different sampling platters and tasting courses, we had to save a little room for dessert because they possibly saved the best for last. So we had a small indulgence, but an indulgence indeed, it was a deconstructed key lime pie. And even our server had a chance to, because this was a soft opening, had a chance to say that he tried it for the first time earlier today. And he really noticed really good balance of the cream and the acid from that. And that's why I said it's fresh ingredients. You can tell when they make a key lime pie with really fresh juice because it has that real taste. It's not just the sugar bomb of pie that you might get at some bad chain restaurant. having it deconstructed we actually talked to the chef that made it he stopped by our table and we got to try to guess some of the different things because there was a deconstructed crust so you had the key lime kind of gelatin middle part that was there it was on a slight drizzle of coconut cream and then he mixed a few different things into the crust which was kind of put on either side so you can kind of get a little dabble of all three of those layers of it and create your own perfect bite for the key lime pie so so he used some different spices, including nutmeg, some crushed up cookie, kind of like a ginger snap, so you could get a little bit of the texture of that, a little bit of the creaminess of that key lime area, just a little taste of coconut cream drizzle that he put on there. And he mentioned that he might play around with the coconut cream drizzle and maybe do like a meringue as well, like you might try to traditionally see on some different pies, like a key lime pie or like a lemon meringue pie. It was fun to talk to him about his art, what he brought to the table for us to try. So definitely a great way to end our tasting menu for this evening. The one key 
stop that we got to just get a little bit of a preview on was that they have a reserve room. So they have a lot of their high-end spirits there, including all of their high-end tequilas, mezcals, and other pricier exclusive spirits. And their menu was super impressive. It had multiple pages of each type of spirit. So if you're looking for some type of unique tequila, this would be a place that you'd wanna target when you're in the area and even make it a destination. We'll definitely be bringing more people back the next time because you can't go wrong with fresh ingredients you can't go wrong with attention to detail and it's very apparent when you walk in there's blown glass that's hand blown in mexico that throughout the restaurant it's two different levels and so you see that you see all these different attention to detail the lamps the textures on the walls the tables and that's really apparent all the way through Do you have a favorite Latin cuisine dish that you enjoy? Let us know in the comments section below. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for the notifications for when we post new videos for other restaurant openings like this, as well as a lot of our wine travels where we're sharing the world of wine with you. We'll see you on the next one.